Hello there. Uh, welcome to another of our sessions of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, a Professor of Pathology at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and a host of this program, which is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. That is a joint entity or joint venture with uh, the uh, PATH presenter, which uh, provides the software and the, the uh, Digital Pathology Association, which helps to provide the slides and some of the other support. Our case today comes from the realm of GI pathology. It's a rather unusual case. Uh, the patient is a 55-year-old uh, farmer who has come to medical attention because he's been having increasing arthralgias and has developed diarrhea. Um, so otherwise uh, being thought of as healthy, we might ask uh, what sorts of things have this kind of association with arthralgias or arthritic diseases and uh, diarrhea? Well, there are a number of things where we can have systemic symptoms associated with diarrhea. And of course, the most common is uh, any infectious uh, diarrhea, uh, which is producing some sort of an antigen antibody uh, reaction that results in an arthritic uh, response. Um, but there are some others and specifics that we'll, uh, we'll comment on as we go forward. Ulcerative colitis, of course, can have uh, various joint manifestations as well, uh, along with several vasculitic diseases like IgA vasculitis, Kawasaki's disease. Recently, we've seen uh, COVID-19 in children uh, also be associated with uh, some uh, diarrhea as well. Um, and then uh, HIV and polyarthritis, arthritis, excuse me, can have been reported in the past to be associated with uh, diarrhea and uh, uh, arthralgias of varying sorts. So uh, on endoscopy, this patient had uh, several slightly uh, plaque-like uh, areas, uh, a little bit punctate, focally ulcerated perhaps, uh, not very specific, but suggestive of some sort of a uh, multifocal, uh, slightly infiltrative uh, pattern. Uh, looking at the digital slides of our biopsies, we see uh, these are not particularly blue. Uh, we're in the small bowel, as uh, we've uh, indicated. Um, and as we look at uh, these uh, samples, we'll take a look on higher magnification to see what's going on. Here we see a little bit of uh, clear space and ectasia. Uh, Lymphangiectasis lymph can be seen in a variety of situations. Uh, but looking around this as well, uh, we notice that there's some kind of foamy cells here. Uh, so a little bit of histiocytic uh, inflammation or in infiltration uh, in several foci. We'll look at these other uh, fragments as well and see what we have here uh, in the higher magnification views. Here again, we see this pattern of sort of pseudo lipomatosis. Sometimes this can actually be due to the biopsy procedure, which may insufflate the uh, uh, bowel with a little bit of air and sometimes injects that into the mucosa. So this may not be lymphangiectasia, it may just be so-called pseudo lipomatosis. Uh, but here again, we see uh, a few clusters of slightly foamy histiocytes uh, in this uh, submucosa. And we'll see if we've got another uh, area here. Perhaps some similar changes. Well, not very striking there. And in the last fragment, again, here we'll see a little bit of expansion of the lamina propria, kind of what we were expecting from that endos endoscopic appearance, um, and this sort of slightly pale, foamy macrophage type of appearance. Well, as we know, uh, this can be a harbinger of infectious disorders. And so uh, histochemical staining uh, would be appropriate in this situation, uh, PAS stain for Whipple's disease and uh, acid fast for potential um, mycobacterial diseases. Although in an immunocompetent patient, uh, certainly my mycobacterial disease would be uncommon. We could think about other sorts of disorders like lipid disorders, xanthelasma type of lesion as well. So uh, on uh, PAS staining in this particular case, uh, this uh, biopsy lit up quite strongly 
with tons of uh, intracellular organisms. Uh, the PAS stain also, of course, highlighting the uh, brush border and the uh, goblet cells. Uh, but this type of uh, dense positive PAS uh, staining within the lamina propria uh, is uh, mostly characteristic of uh, Whipple's disease. Now, it can be seen in uh, <clears throat> um, mycobacterial disease on occasion, uh, but that would also be uh, uh, acid fast or Zeal Nielsen stain positive, which was not the case in our patient. So what is uh, Whipple's disease and uh, what, where does it occur? When, when should we be thinking about it? Can it account for the arthri arthritis? Well, a very nice review from the New England Journal uh, uh, in 2007 uh, shows that most patients are male um, and arthralgias or arthritis are, are very frequently associated with this disorder. Diarrhea and arthritis, uh, perhaps along with malabsorption, weight loss, are the three most common uh, clinical symptoms to be found in these patients. And uh, taken together should certainly be a, a concern. Now note also, however, that fever, uh, neurologic signs, pleural effusion, ocular changes have also been reported in not insignificant numbers of patients. Um, and sometimes, uh, uh, can be the presenting symptom without uh, the associated uh, diarrhea. So what's going on here? Well, the uh, uh, Whipple's bacterium, Trophophyma whippelii, um, is a, essentially an incompetent bacterium. It cannot uh, live alone. Uh, its genome is defective in the production of several amino acids, um, and therefore it requires cellular support or symbiosis to be able to uh, live. It's believed that it uh, gains infection through the enterocytes, um, uh, some of which may become apoptotic and, uh, and so forth. <clears throat> but uh, the main uh, site of growth is in macrophages, <clears throat> where there is... Uh, uh, particularly decreased uh, interleukin-12, um, which seems to be a characteristic feature uh, associated with this. That leads to macrocyte uh, recruitment, uh, bringing in other macrophages and monocytes, which then also become infected. Um, and then there is a stage at which uh, apoptosis uh, occurs. Um, and that is what leads to dissemination. <clears throat> dissemination can include bone, joints, uh, cardiac, muscle, uh, brain, and other sites as well. Um, and uh, along with this process, there seems to be induction of a tolerogenic uh, dendritic uh, cell, uh, which uh, uh, may promote the spread of this disease. Um, this type of spread obviously has very serious life uh, implications and can lead to death uh, in some patients. Um, and that is a challenge because this is not a frequently encountered disease. And because of the vague symptoms and variable manifestations, um, it can be uh, difficult to detect uh, on initial evaluation. Well, uh, our colleague uh, Priyana Singh uh, sort of whipped this into a, uh, a nice uh, cartoon-like uh, uh, function to remind us of the uh, clinical uh, uh, manifestations the demographic setting, males, farmers, a little bit elderly, Caucasians more frequently, but actually this does occur worldwide. Um, and it involves the intestinal epithelium uh, and biopsy is usually required for diagnosis. Um, initial therapy includes uh, uh, ceftriaxone as well as uh, TMSO uh, to be uh, uh, helpful. Um, and uh, response can be fairly uh, quick, um, but uh, may not be entirely uh, uh, rid of the uh, macrophage response, uh, although the organisms have uh, been eliminated. Um, and this just reminds us that it's the dissemination can lead to particular manifestations in a variety of uh, uh, organ systems, the bones and joints, 
the nervous system leading to dementia or other problems. Endocarditis is a, another area of manifestation. And of course, the malabsorptive symptoms uh, that uh, are associated with the primary site of usual infection. So uh, it's interesting to consider that the, the history of this disease, um, and as, as bacterial diseases go, this was one of the most recently uh, uh, culturable uh, organisms. <clears throat> Although first described as a disease in uh, over 100 years ago, uh, it was only in about 2006 or seven that we were able to fully identify uh, this organism in culture <clears throat> and propagate it successfully. Now, key to that was the recognition that these genomes were deficient in their ability to um, uh, manufacture uh, critical amino acids, um, and therefore mammalian uh, cell uh, media or uh, amino acid enriched uh, media were required for that propagation. The, the detection of this uh, and diagnosis pre-mortem uh, required over 40 years before that was able to be accomplished. And the PAS stain obviously has been around with this for a long time, <clears throat> but other additional um, uh, tools have since become uh, possible, including PCR and immunohistochemistry. So uh, here's the classic appearance of uh, the PAS positive uh, uh, staining in the macrophages. Obviously, this is a hard one to miss because it's so overwhelming. Uh, but it, these my, uh, bacteria can also be detected by immunohistochemistry in other sites, here from the bone marrow uh, using the uh, uh, specific uh, antibody, and here in a lymph node uh, granuloma. Um, so those can be complementary and can be especially useful for retrospective evaluations as well. Now, unfortunately, this immunohistochemical staining is not widely available. Um, and validation materials obviously are, are difficult to come by. So uh, it's usually performed in a reference setting. Now, just to follow up, uh, the <clears throat> review also recommended that a uh, consideration of using uh, PAS staining in conjunction with PCR or PAS uh, possibly in conjunction with immunohistochemistry may be useful. Uh, this is particularly important because uh, these are not entirely uh, exclusive. Uh, so sometimes there are PAS positive cases which, uh, in which the uh, PCR may not be positive. Uh, and likewise, there are cases of PCR positive disease uh, without uh, readily identifiable PAS positive uh, uh, deposits. Now, one caveat in using uh, uh, the uh, immunohistochemistry uh, is that uh, sometimes this can masquerade and look a little bit like a poorly cohesive carcinoma. So sometimes these have, have the appearance of sort of signet ring type cells with uh, vacant cytoplasm and a peripheral nucleus. And because these uh, organisms induce uh, apoptosis uh, and, and macrophages are cleanup cells which will gobble up things, uh, if you have significant epithelial cell apoptosis, which you do get in this disease, uh, that can in result in engulfed cytokeratin proteins, which will stain positively in these cells, which also contain the bacteria. So that can also be present in the disseminated uh, sites as well, which is a real uh, bugaboo to be very careful of uh, uh, in that uh, evaluation of a metastatic lesion. Well, uh, that summarizes our final sign out here was uh, duodenal macrophages with PS positive contents consistent with Whipple's disease. Uh, and we would have recommended PCR testing uh, for further evaluation uh, of this patient. And treatment as indicated would have included the uh, dual antibiotics um, to uh, uh, achieve a cure. Now, recurrences are common with Whipple's disease um, and so, uh, especially in the CNS, and so uh, a high, uh, a close follow-up is useful to make sure that the patient has fully responded to that disorder. Well, thanks so much for joining us. If you like this program, please uh, hit the like button. That helps to ensure that others will get to see it as well. And uh, we always welcome your comments. So please uh, add a comment if you like this, or if there are other things you'd like to see us cover, don't hesitate to uh, drop us a line in that regard. 
And of course, we always uh, are pleased when people subscribe to our channel. That helps you to be ensure that, uh, that you'll receive notice of new videos as they're released and uh, uh, helps us as well to uh, uh, appreciate uh, your uh, readiness and uh, appreciation for, for our uh, products here. Uh, so until next time, thanks so much for joining me.